continuing on with the problem, we're now going to look at section BC. So we'll take our imaginary cut through the section BC. Now um, we could do what we've done in the previous um, section, like we did for section AB, and draw our beam from the left, continuing all the way to um, here. But what I'm going to do instead to make the equations a little bit simpler for me is to draw the right hand side. Okay, so we're still taking a cut somewhere through section BC, but instead of drawing all of this side, left hand side here, I'm just going to draw the right hand side of the, uh, the beam on the right hand side of the cut and use that to work out my internal actions. Okay, so again, let's put on our load. So in this case, all we've got is our distributed load acting over this portion of the beam. Okay, so now we need to start adding in our internal actions here. Uh, but before I do that, let's just go back to the diagram from the Hibbola textbook, just to remind ourselves of what the um, positive sign conventions are for our internal actions on this right-hand side face. Okay, so our diagram here from Hibbola shows that uh, when we're looking at the right-hand side here, our positive shear force is acting vertically upwards and our positive moment is clockwise. So let's go and put those on our free body diagram. Okay, so starting with the shear force acting upwards as positive and our moment acting clockwise as positive. Because we're wanting to write an equation for these internal actions as a function of where we are in the beam, so where this imaginary cut is, we need to define that. So we could define it however we like. We could define x as being from point A to where the cut is and then write our equations accordingly. But what I'm going to do is to define uh, a different variable, call it x dash, and that is from point C, the right hand end of the beam, to our imaginary cut. So this will just make the equations a little bit simpler. Okay, so before we uh, do the equations of equilibrium, we'll just again note that we have um, the equivalent point load for our distributed load, W times X dash, and it will act at a distance um, X dash over two. Okay, so let's start writing our equations of equilibrium. We have some of the forces in the vertical direction equal zero. So we'll have the shear force, internal shear force V, uh, positive, minus W times X dash. Uh, they're the only vertical forces that we have, so all of that's equal to zero. Rearrange the equation and we get V equals eight times X dash as our shear force equation. Next, we take moments about the cut end again, uh, all equal to zero, taking anti-clockwise as positive. We have the moment, internal moment, and note that it's um, negative because it's going clockwise, and we've defined positive as anti-clockwise in our equations of equilibrium. And then we have minus W X dash squared on two. Okay, so W X dash times its distance X dash over two, and it's also going clockwise about the cut end. And that's all equal to zero, so we can rearrange that and get our equation for the bending moment for section BC equals minus four x dash squared. So again, in preparation for drawing our shear and bending moment diagrams, let's work out some values. Uh, so at end C, where x dash equals zero, we can substitute that into our equation. So V is equal to zero, eight times x dash, which is zero. And our moment is also equal to zero. And then for x dash equals two meters, Substitute that into here, and we'll get V equals 16 kilonewtons, and substitute it into the moment equation, and we'll get moment equals 16 kilonewtons, kilonewton meters also. So four times X squared, so two squared is four, four times four is 16, 